Well, we want to welcome you to the 1130 Wednesday Luncheon Bible Study from Doctrinal Studies Bible Church in Birmingham, Alabama. We are currently in a study of uh, Genesis 6, 7, 8, and 9. Uh, taken uh, the days of Noah, taken from Jesus' uh, discussion on that subject matter in Matthew 24, 37 through 39, where Jesus says, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the days of the Son of Man, or as it was in the days just like in the days of the Son of Man. So we're doing a study to see, well, what were the days of Noah like that brought a cataclysm flood upon the earth that we should know about. I mean, what was the days? And uh, it Noah, the recording in 6, 7, 8, 9, Noah lived to be 950 years, but this is the last 120 years of Noah in the antediluvian period of civilization. And so... We're talking about the last days. And of course, that's a subject that's of importance to us. When you talk about the days of the Son of Man, uh, the days of Christ, uh, from the first coming to the second coming, uh, it is a discussion on the, on the last days. So we're going, to, we're going into Genesis 6 through 9, looking at the last days of Noah that brought the flood, what were those days like? Because Jesus said, you want to pay attention to the, what the days were like. And so we're doing that. And um, this is our sixth study. We're in the sixth today, the sixth lesson on the study of the days of Noah. And today what we're going to, to look at is one of the major causes of the flood in the last days was that the last days, that last 120 years of the antediluvian period while Noah built the ark and preached the righteousness of Christ, uh, is identified in 6, 7, in chapter 6 and 7, and then you have the flood, as maximum evil on the earth. Uh, and so our title of our lesson today is Great Evil on the Earth. If there's and we're going to see that, that that's part of it. It's one of the major parts of it, but it's one of it. And we'll take a good look at this idea today, uh, great evil on the earth and how it is described, that Jesus said, pay attention to how we described it in Genesis so that you can carry it over to the days of the Son of Man. And so that's, the, that's our purpose today as we look at this because the central cause of the flood was the great evil in the last days of Noah that brought the flood until the flood. Now, Noah lived 350 days after the flood in the post-Diluvian period, the period after the flood. We know that uh, from the ninth chapter. So what we understand in chapters 6 and 7, and we get into the eighth chapter, what we understand is the saturation of evil in a, in a society, a culture that had deteriorated the entire civilization of man. Evil. Great evil on the earth. And so one of the main causes, as we, as we will look at this, what was the major cause, even though a lot of different things are involved in it. What was the major cause? The major cause was the saturation of evil on the earth that produced the Nephilims. The sons of God married the daughters of men and they produced a, um, a race of people um, that destroyed the earth. And they literally, it was because of them. And, and the bottom line was why, what was going on? Well, we know that the sons of God, and we, remember we're in our sixth lesson, five lessons, we have discussed this. So if you want to know more in detail, you're going to have to go back and study. But we know that the sons of God, according to a sister book of Genesis, Job, were, were the fallen angels. 
that had revolted with Satan in eternity past. We know that from Matthew 25, 41. <clears throat> Plus Ecclesia, uh, uh, Ezekiel and Isaiah, Ezekiel 28 and Isaiah 14, all that. Y you can go back and study it. They produced a, a group called the fallen ones because the fallen angels cohabited with man. And I, you have to read Jude, the second chapter. I mean, um, well, you can read Jude, uh, verse 6, and then 2 Peter 2, 4, and 5. Um, the third chapter of Peter, 2 Peter, third chapter, will give you that information as well. But <clears throat> you will see them today to refer to them... And what was that? What was the purpose of the Nephilim? I mean, it's it's Satan's operation because it produced great evil. You know, I always say to you, how do you know? What do you know about evil? I say, well, it comes from the devil. And they say, well, how do you know that? And I say to you, write the word devil down and then mark through the first letter. That's where evil comes from. Well, what we're going to learn today is something about this, this saturation of evil on the earth. And so what was Satan's purpose in cohabiting, attacking the Cainites and the Sethites? There were three races. The antediluvian period began with two races, the Cainites and the Sethites. You know, Cain and Abel and Seth. Well, what we have going now is that we have a third race produced that can't reproduce. That's the Nephilim. And this is really important for us that we understand that. They have no genealogy. They're the only ones that have been created that don't have a genealogy. And we've already talked about that. If you want to know more about that, you'll have to go back and study that. <clears throat> and so where, where we are today is in uh, Genesis 6, 11 through 13, 11 through 13, and then verse 17. That's what we're going to focus on today. Uh, great evil on the earth. Here's what it says, verse 11. Now the earth was corrupt in the sight of God, and the earth, pay attention to the earth, not the world, the earth. Now the earth was corrupt in the sight of God, and the earth was filled with violence. God looked on the earth, and behold, it was corrupt, for all the flesh had corrupted the ways upon the earth. And the way they had done that is that the sons of God married into the Canaanites and into the Sethites. The Sethites were the lineage of Christ. But listen, Satan always goes for the big game. Just to be sure, he always pollutes everything. Like Matthew 2, he didn't go in just to kill one baby. He killed them all in Bethlehem. You just have to understand how he operates. You should understand that from that story itself. That's, that's the, that, instead of white Christmas, that was the black Christmas. Well, what he's after is polluting the messianic genealogy of Jesus Christ. He's trying to destroy the seed of Christ, Galatians 3.16. That's what this is about. Now, verse 13. Then God said to Noah, the end of all flesh has come before me. Why? Because the flesh has been, pollu uh, has been polluted uh, towards Satan's idea of destroying the seed of Christ. That goes back to Genesis 3.15, the seed of the woman. For the earth, there it is again, because the earth is filled with violence because of them, Nephilim, and behold... And, and the fact that all flesh has been corrupted. And behold, I'm about to destroy them with the earth. He's going to destroy an entire civilization because the earth has been polluted by the earth. The earth is going to destroy the earth. Now, it's going to be interesting in Hebrew how he describes that. Now I'm going to drop over to verse 17 because I'm looking for what's going on there's great evil going on in the antediluvian period in the last days. 
Behold, I, even I, am bringing a flood of water upon the earth to destroy all flesh and which is the breath of life from under the heaven. Everything that is on the earth shall perish. And so after a word of study, we're going to come back and we're going to take a look at that and understand because he says, take a good look at the days of Noah in the last days of Noah on earth in the antediluvian period. And you will get a glimpse of what it's going to be like in the last days of the son of man. And so we're really, we're really looking, you know, really hard at this subject matter because it, it is applied to our life. We live in the, we today live in the last days of the son of man before he comes back. So let's have a word of prayer. Remember the Bible is a spiritual book for spiritual people, for spiritual living. Can't learn it nor live it in carnality. Evidence of carnality is personal sin in the Christian's life. How do I get out of carnality and back into spirituality of the indwelling Holy Spirit who has made my body the temple of God? 1 Corinthians 6, 19 and 20. My body is no longer my own. It's the temple of God. It's a place where God dwells. It's a naos. It's the inner sanctuary where the blood brings the presence of God into your life. The blood of Christ. The Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. Now, when you came to the cross for salvation, you got justification. Because Adam's sin had condemned you. Adam's sin. The Adam's sin had condemned you. Romans, the fifth chapter, 12 through 21. The Adam's sin had condemned you. You're under condemnation. And the blood of Christ, when you believe that Jesus died for your, personally, for your sins, was buried and raised from the dead. When you believe that, you are justified from Adam's sin to become once and forever a child of God through being born again. But as a believer, when you come back to the cross of 1 John 1, 9, with personal sin in my life because I'm living in carnality, pleasure of the flesh, when I confess my sin, God is faithful and just to forgive me and cleanse me. So, Confession of sin in 1 John 1, 9 brings me back to the cross as a believer, as a Christian. I confess my sin and I get cleansed from carnality to be restored to, listen to me, to sanctification. Not justification, sanctification. The ministry of the indwelling Holy Spirit in the church age under the new covenant. My, my people, you've just got to get to understand that. Confession of sin brings you back to the cross as a believer. And you look at the cross and you should see yourself in Galatians 2.20. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, it's not I who live, but Christ lives in me. Well, confession of sin says you've been living for yourself. You've not been living for the Lord. You look at the cross and you see yourself hanging there with Christ. And God has made a grace way for you to recover and to, and, to, and to bring you back to a place where you live out in your life the dynamics of what it means to be in union with Christ, to be in union with God through Christ. Well, I'm going to give you a moment to do that. Then we're going to get in this morning's study. Really important. Great evil on the earth. We're going to take a real close look at what God says. Saturation, this kind of evil will bring judgment upon the earth. And it's coming. Oh, it's coming. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for these that have come our way today. I pray they have made confession, at least by examining three areas of their life, mental attitude type sins, sins of the tongue and overt sins. And I pray, Father, confession would be made in silence and privacy in their own life before they study so that they can be restored under sanctification to the inner ministry of the Holy Spirit who wants to teach and recall the word of God from our life. John 14, uh, 20, 25 and 26, 15th chapter, 24, 25, 26. Bring, bring us to that type of information, Father. 
may the Holy Spirit teach and recall in our life the important truth of great evil on the earth is what destroyed it. And these days are going to be compared uh, to, the, to, this, to the days of the Son of Man, which will bring him back. For I've made my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I'm going to look at five reasons why the cause for the great flood, the cataclysmic flood upon the earth was evil, great evil that resulted in God destroying an entire civilization called the antediluvian civilization. In Genesis 5, that would take you from, no, from Adam through Seth to Noah. Genesis 5. You could read about that genealogy. In chapter 9, 28, we're told that Noah lived 350 years after the flood. In other words, he lived 350 years in our civilization called the post-Diluvian, the civilization after the flood. That's kind of interesting. We, and we'll, we'll see how, how he fared uh, when he got to the, uh, to the new land in his life in the post-Diluvian. Now, point number one, in Genesis 6, 5, I want to go back and take a look at that. The Lord saw that the wickedness or the evil of man was great on the earth and that, watch this now, and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. That's a, see, it's one thing. To be, in, to be involved in evil, this is the way the world is run because it's run by the devil, 1 John 5, 19. He is the God of this world. The whole world lies in the power of the evil one. That is broken in Christ through believing that Jesus died for your sins, was buried and raised from the dead the third day. That power is broken in your life. And it can remain broken through the great ministry of the indwelling Holy Spirit, third member of the Godhead. How God dwells in your life forever. John 14, 16, 17. Now, in, in Genesis 6, 5, the writer describes the earth being saturated with great evil. He describes it, it was so evil, watch this now, that every intent of the thoughts of the heart was only or exclusively evil, paneros in the Greek language, continually. In the Hebrew, you have a meaning in the Hebrew of every moment of every day. It has the Hebrew word kol on it, meaning all. It has the definite article ha on the word yom. And the reference here is every minute of every day. Let's go back and look at it. Every intent of the thoughts of the heart was only evil continuously every minute of every day that's all they thought about now listen we have our moments here and there every moment of every day mm. can you imagine living in a society like that mm. Every intent of the thoughts of the heart explains what was being formed in the minds as concepts to live every day. The, the concepts were evil. They, they're concepts for life and living. Their attitude about God, the tor attitude towards each other, the attitude, their concepts. When it says... When it says every intent of the thoughts of the heart is explaining the way the mind forms or frames concepts. 
that we live by every, and for them, every minute of every day was evil. Not sin, evil. Jeremiah 17, 9 would give you a clue. The deceitful, deceitfulness of man, in, de deceitfulness in the heart of man, and desperately sick. Sick. I mean, like somebody does something that's so far out, ugly, somebody goes like, that's sick. There you got it. We're told that only evil continu continually in the Hebrew means that the thoughts were e evil every minute of every day in the minds of mankind in the antediluvian world of the last days. Evil is a worldly system of cosmos diabolicus, meaning the thought processing that is controlled by the devil rather than God. We call it in Ephesians 4, 20 through 24, old man cosmos diabolic. Cosmos, the Greek word for world, and diabolicus, the Greek word for devil. The devil. Evil is the worldly system of, of, the, of cosmos diabolicus or the devil's system of thinking who is referred to as the evil one in 1 John 5, 19, as well as in our passage in the Greek of the Septuagint. He's called, he's called the evil one. And this entire program stands in opposition to God's will and divine viewpoint, which we call new man divine viewpoint thinking. Well, it's just, if you want to read what's going on in your day and how to combat this, you ought to read Ephesians 4, 20 through 24. In 1 John 5, 19, we know that we are of God and the whole world lies in the power of the evil one. Told definite article, Poneros. The whole world. Now, imagine the whole world. Now, if you want to know what the whole world, the world is distinct from the earth. If you want to know what the world is, you, 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 you get it in John 3, 16. Now, you know the earth, man came from the earth, and he goes back to the earth. The earth, earth is what you park your car on, your house is built on. The world. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever would believe in him uh, in the world would not perish, because they already are. The perishing would stop, and eternal life would replace perishing. Is the difference between the world and the earth. Here is the danger. This is the, re the, the signal. The danger signal goes off. Evil in the heart of mankind is expressed first in the culture that is corrupting the civilization of mankind. It did it in the antediluvian civilization, ADC, I abbreviate it. Antediluvian civilization, ADC. I don't want to write it out every time, so you'll say ADC. God warns, God warns in Genesis that we can apply to the days of the Son of Man, church age under new covenant that we live in. God warns that evil that is only continuously operating in the hearts of mankind will corrupt the earth. Wouldn't it be good if all these people that are in the green idea would grasp that? Because many of those who are involved in are involved in evil. Not all of them, but a lot of them. Politically. <laughs> be careful you're not you're not sucked up into all this stuff. 
God warns that evil that is only continuously in the heart of mankind corrupts the earth. Genesis 6, 11. Now the earth was corrupt in the sight of God, and the earth was filled with violence. That's the second thing. Watch this. Here's the first thing. Evil in the heart of man continuously. Only evil continuously. Secondly, violence. Second was corruption, and third is violence. Evil in the heart of man Corruption of a social system and a divine system and violence. When you throw this, listen, evil first, then the evil that corrupts a society and a way of thinking produces uncontrollable violence. We call some of that crime. It's bigger than that. It's bigger than that, my people. Evil in the heart of man corrupts his culture. Watch how it works. This is typical. Here's how it corrupts. Education, music and art, but very seldom gets into sports or into church. And dear hearts, I'm here to tell you, it's in both of those now. First education, then music, then art, culture. That's just to give you a little bit. But there's some things that people hold back on. You know, like family get together, we're not gonna talk about politics. Or in the South, football. Because everybody's for Auburn or Alabama in Alabama. So if you want to have a civil conversation, you say, well, we're not going to talk about politics. We're not going to talk about football. We're not going to talk about re religion. <laughs> right? I'm from the North. We didn't talk about politics or religion. Down here, you can't even do, uh, you, can't, you, can't even do you, can't even, you can't even do the sports thing. Listen, so these were off, these were off limits. Let's be social and civil. Let's leave these aside. Not anymore. Not anymore. Education, corrupt. Music, corrupt. Art, corrupt. Sports, who would have ever believed Church, when somebody tells you that the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ is not enough to save you by itself, you got to add something to it in order to be saved. That's evil. I'm just telling you the truth. You need to be sure that you can get on the ark. You couldn't get on the ark that way. Only the saved can get on the ark. You can't get saved that way. You can't add anything to the work of Christ any more than you can add anything to the word of God. My, 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 people. How am I crunching you? Here's point number two. Did you note the three stages that result in great evil on the earth that will bring the destruction of the earth? Did you notice that? Here it is. Panaras evil. That's evil that comes from the devil. We call it cosmos diabolicus. Panaras evil. The evil one. Here are the three stages. Evil in the heart, and his intent is to get it there all the time, every minute of every day, so that he can corrupt society and civilization. 
so that they become violent towards each other. You can always tell the devil, listen, he always lies. He, he calls good evil and evil good. Listen, we murder our children. We murder our children in America. We murder our children. We murder them as soon as they have some sort of life in them, in the womb. We, we murder them. And it's okay. We've been doing this now for years. It's okay. No, it ain't okay. You don't murder them inside the womb or outside the womb. You don't do it either way. No value for life. The first thing the evil has to do is destroy a whole concept of there's value in life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believed in him would not perish but have everlasting life. Who is he talking about? He's talking about those who have human life and need divine life because of Adam's sin. They don't have divine life. They're dead. They're spiritually dead. They're spiritually in darkness. They live in spiritual darkness. The 13 judicial charges of Adam's sin. They live it. It's what they live. They're blind. They live as spiritually blind people. They're dead. They live like spiritually dead people. They don't know the things of God. They don't know them spiritually. They, they can know them academically, but it don't save you to know them academically. It's got to be transferred from the mind to the heart. These three stages, evil in the heart, corrupting society and the way we think, produces great violence against each other. Great violence against each other. Listen, what other nations are doing and have been doing without a peep from the rest of the world, like China. A civilized society. Listen, we're so corrupt in the things they do. We're so much in line with what they do that we don't have any social or spiritual or moral fiber to call them out because we do the same thing. We just do it different. We're in a mess. These three stages of Ponoros evil will destroy a civilization. It will destroy ours just like it did Noah's. Here's danger. Danger. When the earth becomes filled with evil in the heart, corruption in the society, and violence in the street, then you know what God thinks and what he says he's going to do. This is true whether it's an individual or collectively a society. Then God said to Noah, the end of all flesh has come before me because the earth is filled with violence. It's a cow perfect. It's a state of existence. Second, because, because of them, behold, I'm about to destroy them with the earth.
what God was saying to the days to Noah and the days of Noah, he's saying to you and I in the days of the Son of Man. That's what Jesus told us today. Satan was out to destroy the seed of Christ, Messianic, Galatians 3.16. What is he out to destroy today? Listen to me closely. The church. And boy, he has exercised us to no end during this pandemic. The church has got to rise up and say no more. If they put us in jail, they put us in jail. It will be for the cause of Christ. You must not let them shut you down. This thing is over. And the ex exercise that the enemy has put on America in the concept of freedom is enormously dangerous. And some states are still in it. And it should show you their heart. Point number three. Listen, there will not be long when I get through the book of Genesis. They probably, they probably won't let me. They will censor me from teaching you. That's their thing now. Just shut them up. See, they try to censor you. This is so how they operate. They'll try to censor you. Then they'll threaten you. Then they'll put you in jail. Then they'll murder you. They'll try to do it legally, and if they can't do it legally, they'll go behind your back and assassinate you. The, this is evil, and it's violence. You have to see the violence in the society, in the, in the, in the courts, before you can see it in the streets. If you see it in the courts, you will soon, soon see it in the street. What they have done in the last four or five years, and there's been no cry against it but lone voices. They're political enemies. They will send an army in to get them in the middle of the night. They don't give a rip about kids and parents and whoever's in that house. We're in deep trouble. And I'm afraid we're asleep because we're rocking ourselves with evil to sleep every night. It's okay. It's going to go away. Uh, it's okay. It's going to get better. Mm -mm. It's going to get worse. In Genesis 6, 13, point number three, God warns mankind of the consequences of evil, corruption, and violence, how it destroys a culture, a civilization, and finally the earth. Note that it is evil in the heart of man that corrupts and destroys the civilization, and that destroys the earth. In Genesis 2.15, in the garden, God told man, I've put you here to tend the garden, the earth. But that's Adam. By the time we get to Noah, we're done with it. God says that's enough. And he's going to do the same thing with the Son of Man. In the days of the Son of Man, the same thing's going to come. This time it's not going to come by water. It's going to come by fire. And you ought to read 2 Peter 3rd chapter. What is coming? And we've got to be preachers of righteousness. It is coming. Judgment day is coming. The only way on the ark of Jesus Christ is through faith in the gospel of Jesus Christ. And the devil is out to destroy the church and the message of the church. If he can destroy the message of the church, he don't have to destroy the church. He can leave it there to function for his whims. My, my, my. You know, the antiluvian world, when it was destroyed, it wasn't without religion. It was out, it, listen, it was out without the message of righteousness. It was preached by one man, 
One man still standing, preaching. The message of righteousness of Christ. God said to Noah, the end of all flesh has come before me. For the earth is filled, Cal perfect, with violence because of them. And behold, I'm about to destroy. The word destroy in the, nefe, in the Hifield participle is the concept of ruin. I'm going to destroy this society with the earth. I'm going to run. I'm going to run it with the earth. R-U-I-N. The Hebrew. You know what he's going to do? He's going to cleanse the earth. And in doing it, he's going to change it. The geographics of the post-Diluvian period was changed dramatically by the cataclysmic flood of the earth, the whole, the whole earth. And what we live in today in the post-Diluvian period are continents as a result of the flood. He said, I'm going to separate them up. I'm going to put water between them. I'll send missionaries to them. And here we are in the post-Diluvian period. God declared that he would destroy the earth with the earth by a cataclysmic flood. In 2 Peter 2, 5, we know it was a cataclysmic flood because of the Greek word that's used. And God did not spare the ancient world anti-Diluvian civilization, but preserved Noah, a preacher of righteousness, with seven others when he brought a flood. The word flood is kata kuzmas, where you get the word cataclysm, cataclysm, cataclysm. He will bring a flood upon the world of the ungodly, 2 Peter 2.5. You need to read Ephesians 5, 6 about the ungodly. Christ died for the ungodly. That's what Noah preached. It was the only way he could get on the ark. The ark was for the redeemed to take them out of safety of divine judgment. Eight people. Eight people out of millions boarded the ark. That's how evil the world had become. As it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the days of the Son of Man. Mm, mm, mm. Are you listening to me, church? In Matthew 24, 38 and 39, for as in those days before the flood, uses the Greek word again for cataclysm. They were eating and drinking Marrying and giving in marriage. Now pay attention to this. Until the day. In other words, what was going on? When, what, what was going on? They, life was just normal and everything else. Except that life was filled with evil in the hearts every minute of every day. It was corrupting the society. Evil was corrupting the society and a civilization, and God has, has preached for 120 years to these people that he's going to bring a flood and destroy them. They need to get on the ark. Judgment is coming. Now, let's go back. They were, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage. Watch. Watch the word until. Until the day that Noah entered the ark, while they were marrying and eating, going on with their normal life, they did not understand, even, even in the day, 
on the day in which Noah entered the ark, the ramp is down, and everybody's inside or going inside, and Noah's standing on the platform preaching to get saved, to get aboard. They did not understand. They were not willing to understand until the flood came and took them all away. You know what happened to them? They all drowned. Nobody swam to the other side. Only the ark made it. Everything else destroyed. Did you get this? Watch this now. Until the day, until the flood. You know what was in that? They did not understand. They were not willing to understand. They were not willing to understand. Evil had so corrupted their minds. The floods come and the waters rise. It's covered the whole earth and they've all drowned. But see, it was too late. Now they understand. When the flood came, now they understood the door was shut by God and nobody could get in. You're not listening, are you? Because as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the days of the Son of Man. Are you listening to me? And they did not understand until the flood came and took them all away. So will the coming of the Son of Man be. Matthew 24, 38 and 39. Noah was a preacher of righteousness for 120 years, yet they did not understand until the, until the flood came. Why? I'll tell you why. Because he says, every intent of the thoughts of their hearts were evil only continuously. There was no room for God in their heart. And they were identified when they died as ungodly. In conclusion, let me conclude. Divine judgment upon the antediluvian civilization is further described in Genesis 6, 17. Behold, I, even I am bringing the flood of water upon the earth to destroy the flesh in which is the breath of of life, Genesis 2, 7, from under heaven, everything that is on the earth shall perish. How will they perish? They will drown. Genesis 7, 21 through 23, refers to this breath, Nishama, Yurak, Haim. Here's my point. Here's what Jesus is telling us. Biblical history will repeat itself. In the last days of the Son of Man on earth. This days of Noah on earth will repeat itself. Not by, not by flood because he put a rainbow in the sky to tell us it won't be by flood, but it will come. This time it will come by fire, 2 Peter 3. Biblical history will repeat itself. That's, the, that's what Jesus was trying to teach. We need to be preachers of righteousness. It's going to get tougher and tougher to fill your churches. It's going to be tougher and tougher to get conversions of people over 25 or 26. Because they've been corrupted through education, music, culture. There will be uncontrollable violence in the street. And you know where you are. Because people's evil in the heart of people is there every minute of every day.
Our Heavenly Father, we thank you today for these that have come our way to study with us by the automobile and the internet. I pray the Holy Spirit would minister the truth to our life. We are in the last days of the Son of Man. The end is going to come in great judgment, this time by fire. It will destroy the earth. It will renovate it. As it did with water, it will do it with fire. And only those who put their faith in the gospel of Jesus Christ, that he died personally, personally for their sins, personally, so they can look to the cross and say, I was crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, it's not my life. It's not I who live, but Christ lives in me. You see, give us boldness, Father, not to get caught up with all the evil going on, but to stay steady preaching the gospel of righteousness of Christ. If people think that... the, the life is going to go on, marrying and, and uh, having children and, and all of this without any consequence to evil. And they're, they're, they're fooling themselves. The churches need to preach it. Need to preach it. Because we're in it. We're in it up to our eyeballs. And unless the church of Jesus Christ gets on the stick, we're going, to be in, we're going to be in big, big trouble, Father. Encourage our hearts with the truth of the word of God in Jesus' name. Amen.